In today's episode, I'm gonna answer a question from one of my YouTube and Facebook viewers, Cozy Blankets, who is in the partnership with her business with her husband and is finding that they disagree on how to grow the business and wanted my advice on how to work out partnerships. So with my experience, right now, I'm the only owner in EvanCarmichael.com. In my previous businesses, I've had partners and my wife also owns her own business and I'm almost a partner in that business in terms of giving advice and trying to help her out with her company as well. It's especially hard when you're married to your partner because there's a whole other set of issues that you know come in beyond just the business part of it. But usually what I found in, in any kind of partnership situation, if you're married or not, is you have one person who's a little bit more you know, aggressive and wants to grow and has you know, riskier ideas and the other person is a little bit more play it safe, risk averse, conservative, doesn't want to try as many new things or is worried about the downside. So you have the worrier and the optimist. It's typically how it, it works out with a lot of different partnerships. So I don't know which one you are, if you're the worrier, if you're the optimist, but what you need to do, in my, my experience in working with partnerships, first is understand the other person. So you gotta sit down, understand where they're coming from, you know, try to explain your part, listen to, to what they're saying, you know, really carefully, try to get a really firm grasp of why they're concerned uh, with what you wanna do versus what they wanna do. And then the next thing I would do is try to start it on a small scale. So whatever big idea you have that you wanna go after, start small. Start it on a really small scale, something that you can see if it works. You commit really minimal time and budget to it, especially the money side. Usually that's what's more of the concern than the time. We're gonna spend all this money on something that's not gonna work out. So try to get it started without spending a lot of money or without spending any money, just your time and see if you can build a little bit of momentum. I know uh, with my wife's business, I encourage you to do a whole bunch of stuff and, and we slowly get into things. She's definitely the more conservative person and I'm the more, let's try something out. And I'll try a whole bunch of stuff with my business and we'll have a whole bunch of failures. And then the ones that really work, I'll give to her and say, hey, this worked for me. You should go and, and try it and it can hopefully work for you. And again, you start on a small scale and then build it up. So that's the best strategy that I would give you is start small, find a way to make it work, find a way to make it start generating some attention or start generating some revenue and build it up from there. The other thing that can help is if you show case studies. So if you show other companies that have done it before, if you know you see me giving advice and it's worked for me, you can say, well, it worked for Evan, so let's give it a shot. Or whoever else you look up to, if it's a famous entrepreneur or something else you've read online, show that it's worked for somebody else and it's a lot easier to kind of convince them to want to take that first step. But again, step one, the small step, launch it, you know, it might fail. We launch a, a ton of different things on, on evermarkarmichael.com and most of them don't go anywhere. It's a whole bunch of small tests and then you see the ones that are working and you start to expand those and the ones that don't work, then you shut them down and move on to new things. So you want to encourage trying out new things as long as it's not so risky that it could sink your company because you're spending a lot of money on it or all of your time on it. If you want to accomplish something big with your business, then you need to have a team. You just have to. Look at any of the people that you look up to. Who are your entrepreneurial heroes? Who has done what you want to do? These are the people you want to emulate and be on the same level as. Nobody did it alone. They didn't do it by themselves. They may be the face, but there's a lot of people underneath them. And so if you want to be able to take that ambition of yours and turn it into something big, it has to be with the team. It's also really important that as you grow, you're not just hiring order takers, not just hiring people to do tasks, but you're hiring people to do projects. The difference is, look at this business, Toronto Dance also as an example. For me to be able to tell somebody on the team, I want to add an extra thousand students next semester to this business. Go do that. That's a project versus telling them exactly what they need to do, which is a task. If all you are doing is giving tasks instead of giving projects, then you will always be the bottleneck because everybody's always coming to you for advice and to make the final decision. Where what you want is people who get what you want to do, who understand the mission, who will push you and come up with new ideas because they're experts at what they do and they can take the project and run with it. That's how you have ultimate success. Now at the beginning, it's hard. Very few companies, whoever their first employee was, is still with the business. And it's not because that was a terrible employee, it's mostly because the entrepreneurs suck at managing. You can't just bring somebody on and say, great, here's all my problems, you take care of it now. You know, that's a real person you gotta deal with. 
You have to train them, you have to support them, you have to manage them, you have to love them, you have to care about their growth. All of those things matter and most people at the beginning really suck at that because we don't go to school for that, we're not trained in that. Where do you learn how to be a great boss? It doesn't happen in our education system. And so you have to develop those skills. And here's the thing that holds a lot of people back. They hire somebody, the first hire doesn't work out. And then what you do is you go back to just plain small. Like, okay, I can't hire someone, it's not gonna work out. So I'm just gonna do it myself. And that can work. And you can forever be a small business with just yourself, doing all the work and it'll be high quality output, but you'll never be able to do anything really big because your time is limited. You only have a certain amount of hours every single day. Don't let that first failure, that first hire not working out, prevent you from continuing the process, from hiring again. Just like chances are whoever you first dated is probably not the person you married. Sometimes it works out and it's great, but most of the time it's not. And so just because you kissed somebody and that relationship didn't work out, it doesn't mean you throw in the towel and say, I'm never gonna get married. It's never gonna work out. I'm just gonna live by myself my entire life. It's not how we think, but for some reason in entrepreneurship, people take that approach because the first hire didn't work out. Now they're never gonna hire anybody again. And so getting over that hurdle, expect the first hire not to work out, even though you're gonna do your best and every time you're gonna learn, then look to make sure you're hiring people to do projects and not just tasks so they can really push you and drive the mission of the business forward. And it all starts with that mindset of just understanding that if you have big ambition, you wanna make a mark on your industry, you wanna achieve big goals, you can't do it alone. You need great people around you. If you wanna know how to stop being average, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something, but instead of being world class at that thing, you settled for being just above average.